Hi there, this is Unmesh and today we're going to solve one of the most common problems faced by portrait photographers and that is cleaning up the backdrop. Now, I agree that it's always best to have a clean, nice, ironed backdrop but then again, you got to do what you got to do if you don't have a clean backdrop, if that's wrinkled for any reason, you got to fix that in Photoshop and also maybe we'll add a little bit of texture to it and it's going to be fun so without any further ado, let's get started. So here we are in Photoshop with this beautiful shot of this beautiful lady and this is a shot that I took back in Shutterfest. Unfortunately the background was a little wrinkly but no problem at all we can fix that up in Photoshop. So let me take you through the complete process first and then we will start right from scratch. So as you can see the background is wrinkly so we added a clean backdrop. We created a clean backdrop and we added it and we masked out the subject just like this. But if we zoom in and if we have a look, let's have a look at the hair we lose some hair, right? So let's have a look at the before and after. So this is the before, this is the after. And we're gonna make some compromises that is gonna be there. However, we don't wanna lose so much hair, right? And that's why we added a texture layer to get back the hair. So just like this, have a look. We get the outside hair, it just comes back, all right? So that's why the texture and the background looks a little more natural because noise is added to it just like the noise as we have in the subject so similar type of noise it doesn't look unnatural and after that if you want you can add some extra texture to it so i added some texture it was not looking great so what i did to match it with that of the original backdrop i actually decreased the saturation and made it black and white just like this and then to separate the subject from the background this is also completely optional i added a gaussian blur to kind of add a shallow depth of field effect so this is what we're gonna do so let's start right from scratch before we begin time for a little commercial break as photoshop users you might need great quality stock photos and design elements from time to time and purchasing them one by one can be really really expensive how about having unlimited access to more than 500,000 assets right from photoshop actions to stock photos to brushes to graphics to wordpress themes courses and more and all with commercial license everything you need in one place with envato elements subscribe to envato elements only through pixim.com slash envato and send me a screenshot of your purchase to get pixim perfect photoshop assets as well for free check the description for more details so here we are back in photoshop with the tutorial and the first thing that we have to do is to make two copies of the background layer or the subject layer so to do that press ctrl or command j twice two copies now this one is for the backdrop let's name it backdrop and the top one is for the texture that is the texture layer d-e-x-t-u-r-e -E. now what we have to do turn off the texture layer come to the backdrop layer now in the backdrop layer we just want the backdrop to just have the backdrop we need to remove the subject so to remove the subject we need to select the lasso tool or the polygonal lasso tool whichever is your favorite i'm gonna go ahead and choose the lasso tool and let's make a selection from the outside of her leave a little gap and make a selection just from the outside of her all right so just like this there you go now we have the selection now what we have to do there are a couple of ways of removing it i'm going to use the content aware fill the content aware fill allows us to remove stuff automatically it's just like the automatic clone stamp tool so to do that go to edit fill and make sure Contents is set to content aware and you don't need to check preserve transparency as there's nothing transparent over here and hit OK. Make sure color adaptation is checked. Hit OK and it will do some processing. Now keep in mind that if you're processing a 16 bit image, as you can see, this is a 16 bit photo. It's going to take some time to process stuff in Photoshop. If it's 8 bit, it's going to be a little faster. So there you go. The subject has now been removed and it has done a pretty good job of doing that. Now, once that is done, press Ctrl or Command D to let go of the marching ends. All right. Now we need to blur it out, remove all the wrinkles. All right. So go to filter, blur, and then Gaussian blur. All right. Keep on increasing it until every wrinkle and every fold is gone. So let's go ahead and increase it. I'm going to go ahead and choose a value of probably, let's go for 378. It works fine for me. Now, once you're satisfied with your value, hit OK. Now it's going to differ from image to image depending upon the resolution and the kind of wrinkles that you have. Try to have the minimum value with everything gone. OK, hit OK. Now it is time for us to add the texture back in, which will also bring along with it the hair, right? So let's come back to the texture layer and turn that on. Now, before we do anything, we need to convert this into a smart object. To do that, go to filter and then convert for smart filters. Hit OK. Now, why converting this? 
You see, we're going to be applying the high pass filter to it and we need to have the ability to change the values after the fact. Now, once this is converted, we need to go to filter, other and then high pass. Now, this is crucial. All you need to do, take the radius all the way to 0 0.1. Okay, now let's zoom in quite a bit into the image. You don't see anything. You need to gradually increase the radius and as you increase it, there will be a point where you begin to see the hair as we do right now. Let me zoom in and let me show you. All right, so we are beginning to see the hair. Keep on increasing it, okay? If you increase it too much, there will also be a point where you will begin to see the wrinkles. We don't want that to happen. So if you go beyond this, you see the wrinkles showing up. So you need to find that sweet spot where you see most of the hair, but not the wrinkles in the backdrop. All right, so let's go back. Let's take it to the left. We see the wrinkles. We still see it. I'll take it even more. I'll go for 2.0. That works for me. And once you're satisfied with the value, hit OK. Now you can change the values later, right? Keep that in mind. Hit OK. Now we need to change the blend mode of the texture layer from normal to something like overlay. So let's go ahead and choose overlay for now. You can also choose hard light. That's totally upon you. Let's go ahead and choose overlay. Now, as you can see, the texture has been applied to that of the backdrop, right? Now we need to limit the texture to just the backdrop. We don't want it on the subject. To do that, hold the Alt or Option, bring the cursor between these two layers, there's a line, the cursor changes to a square with an arrow, and then click. It creates a clipping mask. You see this arrow right there? It means that it's limited to the backdrop, okay? So even if you kind of decrease the opacity of the backdrop, the opacity of the texture also decreases with that of the backdrop. If you erase the backdrop in some areas, which we will do, we will hide it over the subject, the texture also erases. We don't want it on the subject and that's why we clipped it. Okay, so let's increase the opacity back to 100. Now we need to mask out the subject. So let's click on the mask button. Now what is the concept of mask? Black hides, white shows up. Now with the mask selected, take the brush, make sure the foreground color is black, zoom out a little bit, all right? And then make the brush a little bigger. Make sure the opacity and flow are at 100 and then simply paint to reveal the subject. You don't have to be super accurate. Just make sure all of the subject is revealed nicely. You can do this very, very quickly. No hard and fast rule of doing it really, really perfectly. Now, once you have done this, to double check, hold the Alt or Option. Click on the mask to view the mask. See there are a couple of areas left and that's why we double checked. Just make sure you paint on all of them. Make sure everything is filled. All right, hold the Alt or Option again and click on the mask to bring back the backdrop and the image. All right, so let's zoom in and now let's slowly and gradually work on this thing. Okay, so with the mask selected still, take the brush and this time the foreground color needs to be white because we need to bring back the backdrop alongside the edge. So make the brush a little smaller and paint along the edge really, really carefully. Okay, just like this. And you will lose a little bit of hair, that is okay. Doesn't matter at all. You see this hair still there? Even if you paint over it, that's because of the texture. If I turn off the texture, they will be gone. So that is why we added the texture to make it look more natural. Now at this point, you see a little bit of the gray spilling over her arm. Don't worry about that so much. We can take care of that later. Just make sure around the edge, everything looks fine and the backdrop is seamless. Now, once you have done the general painting around the edge, zoom out and have a look whether it looks nice or not. There are a few areas left. To check, hold the Alter option again and click on the mask as you see, areas are left. So take the brush and just fill in those areas and you'll be good. Doesn't take much time, make the brush smaller, make it a little harder, right? And if you're wondering how are we making it bigger, smaller, harder or softer, it's very simple to do. So all you have to do, hold the Alt key the right mouse button, drag it to the right to make it bigger, drag it to the left to make it smaller. If you're using a Mac, that would be Option, Control, and then drag with the mouse button. All right, so let's make it soft back again. Hold the Alt and click on it, or Option if you're using a Mac, and click on the mask to bring it back. Now the edge, there's a little bit of spill over. Again, what we have to do, change the color to black, and around the edge, be a little careful and bring things back. So let's start from here make the brush smaller and then just bring things back just like this. 
Now around the hair you need to be a little careful. Make it a little bit bigger and softer. Alright, now that looks like something. Now totally zoom out and let's have a look at the before and after. So this is the after. Looks awesome. And this is the before. We have cleaned out the backdrop. Now if you want to add a backdrop, you can easily do that as well. Now we can add a new texture or a pattern to this if we want. But before we do anything again, do not forget to double check. So hold the Alt or Option and click on the mask. Have a look. There's still a gap left, right? And we need to fill this. And that's why double checking is important. Take the brush, foreground color back, and let's fill this area in properly. You might not be able to see this while the image is visible, but this is crucial because later it might just appear and it might not look right, okay? So all right, everything looks right. Hold the Alt or Option again and click on the mask to bring everything back and we are perfect. Now to add the texture, just locate and go to the folder where the texture or the pattern is. So here we are in the folder where the texture is. However, before dragging and dropping it into Photoshop, you need to make sure that the top layer is selected because if you select the backdrop and add the texture, the texture will be added between these two, between the texture and the backdrop. So anytime you add something, you bring in something into Photoshop, the layer which is selected, it is added above that layer. All right, so make sure the top layer is selected just like this and then go to that folder right in here. Now, once you're in that folder, just drag it and drop it into Photoshop just over the same document. Now, once you drop it, you will have it with the transformation tool. If you do not have it with the transformation tool, press Control or Command T. All right, now adjust it the way you like it. I'm gonna go ahead and make it a little bigger by holding the Shift key and the Alt key together. Shift and Option, if you're using a Mac, that makes it bigger and smaller from the center. All right, now once that is done, I'll hit Enter or Return. Okay, now that is set up. Now that is already a smart object. If it was not a smart object, I would go to filter and then convert for smart filters. How can we tell whether a layer is a smart object or not? You see there's a symbol right around at the corner that says that this is a smart object. Now what we need to do, we can use the same mask of the backdrop right in here. So we'll hold the Alt or Option, click on the backdrop mask, drag it and drop it over here. It looks pretty not so good. You know why? Let's try changing the blend mode. Let's go with overlay because we're losing the lights and shades that we had in the original backdrop. All right, so let's go ahead and change that to overlay. Let's see how that looks. Overlay is fine. Now, as you can see, the original backdrop was black and white and this is kind of not fitting right. So we're gonna convert this into black and white. So one of the ways of doing this is by simply going to image adjustments and then hue saturation and then take the saturation all the way to minus 100. Now, keep in mind, this is a smart object so we can change the values later as well. Hit OK. Now, if you want the subject to have a shallow depth of field effect and want it to be separated from the background, probably add some blur to it. Go to filter, blur, and then simple Gaussian blur. Now, let's add not so much, not so much. Let's add a little blur to it, maybe 9.8, something like 22 is fine. So whatever you choose, that's totally up on you. I'm gonna go ahead with 16, that is fine for me, and I will hit OK. Now, let's zoom in and just paint in the extra areas which is left out, select the mask, make sure you take the brush and the foreground color white and just paint in some areas which are left out just like this. I don't want the Gaussian blur, I don't like it, so I'll just turn it off. So I'll come back to the mask and just paint in some areas which are left out properly. Looks fine to me. You don't have to be super accurate as you can see. Just simply paint around the corners. This area is left, right? So we need to paint along this area. Now to refine it, change the color back to black. So press X to toggle between the foreground and the background. Now let's work on this thing. All right, simple stuff. Let's get a little bit back here like that. Now you can take all the time in the world to refine it, but it doesn't really take so much time. So let's paint in this area as well. All right, now let's zoom out and let's have a look. And there we are. If you wanna add the blur, you can just turn on the blur or you can change the values later by just double clicking on the adjustment. So if you want to adjust any adjustments later, just double click on it and you're good to go. You can change the values anytime you like. So 
12 was fine for me. I'll hit OK again. I like 12. So there you go. That's a super simple way to clean up the backdrop in Photoshop. Now, that's not the only way to do it. There are tons of ways of doing this. This is just one of the ways. So let me take you through the complete recap and then we'll just end with the video. All right. So first off, what we have to do, we have to create two copies of the background layer. And then from one of the copies, we need to remove the subject and blub it out. That will create the backdrop. And then we will mask out the subject. Then from the other one, from the other copy, we will convert that into a smart object and then apply high pass to it. Change the blend mode to overlay or something that you like. We can also try different blend modes like something like hard light. Let's see how hard light does. I'm kind of a fan of overlay. Overlay is fine with me. Hard light is a little more intense. Choose what you like. Hard light is fine as well. Now, once you choose the blend mode, apply the high pass. Make sure you limit that to that of the backdrop only. If you do not limit that, let me show you what happens if you do not limit it. So hold the alter option. If you break the clipping mask, it also sharpens the subject. We don't want that to happen. So hold the alter option. Make sure you click here and limit that to it. Now, if you want to add some texture to the background, some additional pattern to it, as simple to do as well, just add that, drag it and drop it inside of Photoshop, create a mask, mask out the subject and if you want some adjustments you can do some adjustments as well make sure that this is a smart object so that's pretty much it for this video hope this video helped you and if it did make sure to give us a like and also do not forget to subscribe and not just subscribe ring the bell so that you my friend don't miss a thing i would like to take this moment to thank all these nice people for supporting this channel on patreon and helping keep pics imperfect free for everybody forever thank you so much for all the support i'll see you guys in my next one till then stay tuned and make sure that you keep creating